this particular video has to do with related rates is a little more complicated than uh, some of the others that I've looked at. And I'm going to do the general sense. Okay, and so uh, just kind of bear with me. You'll have to substitute the numbers for your particular problem. Uh, but I always try to look for the general sense. Uh, I'll solve a few uh, uh, problems that are uh, that I have real numbers to to kind of just check my work. Uh, but at the same time, I want to I want to solve the whole problem. And so this problem was uh, actually part of our final exam review for my uh, calculus students. And true to form, I had a complete brain fart during that particular moment in time. So I'm going to tackle this now. Okay, so the problem is this. You have a cone that is being filled from the bottom up. It is set up an upside down right cone being filled from the bottom up. And your uh, the rate at which you're filling it, dv dt, is equal to 9. And this, is, I mean, units are kind of irrelevant at this point, but 9 cubic centimeters per minute, let's say. Okay. Now, it really doesn't, that really doesn't matter. Because once we do this, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to just solve for the general case. So what we really need is we really need a way to express r in terms of h. And by I'm talking about these little r and little h down here because that's the water. This is the thing that it just completely brain farted me out. Whenever you work on these problems, you are always working from the perspective of the thing doing the filling. And so you want to look at whatever shape you're looking at uh, according to uh, the fluid that is that is filling that vessel. So as we look at this little h and i'm going to use uh i'm going to use similar triangles because we're dealing with this triangle here and so i can say that little h is to big h as little r is to big r and now the beautiful thing about this is that i can solve for r in this case where big r h over capital h is equal to r so now I can rewrite R in terms of H. Now, uh, the radius of the cone itself, the radius of the cone and the height of the, of the whole cone must be known in order to solve this. So the volume of a cone is equal to one-third. Oh, wow, the other one-third. The kind that actually looks like a three. Uh, three pi R squared H. Now, remember, we just got done finding a value for R. And so I'm just going to simply take that in and put that right back in there. So I've got uh, V, or volume, is equal to one-third pi. And now in parentheses, I have R times H over H squared little h. And now as I just expand and I rearrange things, I have uh, V is equal to, and this is going to be R squared pi over 3 capital H squared times H cubed. Now if I take the derivative with respect to time, here you got to be kind of careful. Okay, take the derivative with respect to time. Now you're going to have to run the, uh, the chain rule. So you're going to have to take dv dh dh dt. Okay, so you're going to take the derivative of v with respect to h, and then you're going to take the derivative of h with respect to t whenever you do that. So uh, this is all a constant. It's one gigantic constant. So now we have dv dt is equal to our gargantuan constant here. And so I'm going to rewrite this as pi capital R squared over 3 capital H squared times 3h squared dh dt times the derivative of what's inside. And now my 3s are going to be very kind to me, and they will cancel. And so what I'm left is, is dv over dt is equal to pi capital R squared little h squared. Now, little h squared, by the way, that's the, val that's the height value of the water all over capital H squared, dh dt. Now, solving for dh dt, I'm simply going to move this stuff over to the other side by flipping it. And so I'm going to take 
the rate at which I'm filling this conical tub. And it's going to be capital H squared all over pi capital R squared little h squared is equal to dH dt. And what you can do with this is if you know R, so let's look at what's known. So what do we know? For this particular problem, we have to know a few things. We have to know what H is. So we have to know H. We have to know capital R. And we have to know the height of the water. And we have to know the rate at which we're pouring it in. So we need to know the height of the cone, the radius of the cone, the height of the water, and the rate at which we're pouring the water in. At that point, we can figure out at, at exactly what rate the, uh, the height of the water is increasing. You'll notice that now that I've solved for it, it doesn't matter what height I choose. And so if you were, I don't know, writing a program uh, to, to generate uh, numerical values and you wanted to, you wanted to hit on uh, uh, various answers so that you could just generate them at will, oh, look, here's a way to generate them, the end. It's just done. All you do have to do now is just simply choose these numbers, plug this formula into the program, and bang, it solves it every single time. So that's a nice little pro uh, problem there. And again, my brain fart was, uh, yeah, I didn't take a look at it from the point uh, perspective of the water. That's where I really wanted to take a take a look at it. With. That concludes this particular video. And if, if you have a problem with some of this, just plug in the values.